Well, hi folks, I'm back in the woods. As you can see, I started to cut a bit off that one tree. Now that's one of the ones that I dropped. I did drop all the dead ones and started to cut up some of the laying down ones. So I thought I'd give you a little bit of footage of me cutting more logs up. Not that it's all that exciting, but hey, I like playing with the chainsaw and it's getting firewood. You can see there's some nice slices there. So, and I'll show you a few other things here through the course of this video. So hang on, here we go. As you can see, the steel makes pretty quick work of those chunks. That is red oak, so it does cut real well. This is the steel farm boss, the MS-271. Not the largest or most expensive steel saw. It's a grade above a homeowner's saw, though, so it's a very good firewood saw. It's called a farm boss because it's basically something that would be used around a farm, not for a commercial logger. It does not work for me. I have an 18 inch bar on it and I also have an, uh, an Oregon chain on it right now, Oregon brand chain. So it does not work for me and I, I will certainly promote steel because I believe in them. I have a Husqvarna helmet on because my steel one wore out and couldn't afford a new one. <laughs> steel does not sell to anybody else other than through their dealers so their prices are always higher because of that. 
whereas this I could get a tractor supply cheaper, so that's why. Not that Husqvarna is a bad saw, but it's not a steel, you know. So I'll come back to you in a little bit with some more cutting. Uh, it's an overcast day today, no rain yet, so we'll see what I can get done. And I'm going to see if I can't haul some of this out um, today, and I'll show you more of what I've been cutting in a little bit. Now I showed you this uh, smooth uh, silver maple in the previous video and after I shot that video I came and was doing some cutting there you can see that secondary trunk I just pieced that all up that cut very nicely so I still have the whole top to get and then when I get into the main trunk here uh, that'll take a while to cut through all of that that's a lot of wood in there so I'll show you that and a couple of the other things that I've been cutting too, and then I'll show you some more cutting with the saw. This tree where I was cutting is one of the dead ones I had shown you the other in the last video, and it did fall where I wanted it to. I think I said I was standing on the other side of the trunk, and I said it would fall towards me, and that's the way I dropped it. Just had one complication. Uh, it started to fall perfectly where I wanted it to, but then the very top of the tree hung up in those branches up in that tree. So it hung up there for a little while. I just had to cut it a little deeper than it fell, but it kicked a little bit more to the left because of that, and it took out this nice little white pine tree. That's a shame that it happened, but at any rate, nobody was injured, the tree's down, and I'm cutting it up, so that's still a win-win. Here was that other large tree that I showed you. I said it was a red oak, and I need to correct myself. I should have noticed this. The bark is similar, but I think this is a scarlet or a pin oak. If you notice along the trunk here, you have a lot of little branches that stick out. That's why they call it a pin oak, because it's got a lot of these little branches. The red oaks usually have a solid trunk, sorry about that, solid trunk with just branches at the top. But the pin oaks, scarlet oaks, they tend to have a lot of small branches. So I'm thinking that that's what this is, and it was just my mistake. And also the scarlet oaks, the pin oaks, they tend to hang on to their leaves through the winter. Even though they dry out, they're kind of just there. They don't fall off. So as you can see, I've started to cut this up a little bit on this end. Got a lot more to go on that. But, but I just wanted to correct myself. Again, I told you I'm not an expert on trees. Also, I wanted to mention there are two other varieties that I neglected to mention that are here in the woods. Um, one is there are some cherry trees in here. There aren't a whole lot right around here. Except, well, right here, these two little ones. These are cherry. And you can tell by the bark, it's a very kind of scaly bark. Sticks out a bit. A lot of these cherry trees don't make it to maturity. I don't know what it is. But uh, it's great wood if you can get a mature one for, for all kinds of lumber uses. And the other variety, I noticed there are a couple up further, closer to the road. Uh, there are a few shagbark hickories. Uh, I do have them various places on the on the farm here. I didn't notice that there were any in here, but yeah, there are a couple of them too. They're very good trees. A lot of BTUs in them. Um, they're miserable to split because the graining just, it's very kind of fibrous. It wants to stick together. It doesn't cleave neatly like the oaks do or the maples do. Even on the splitter, I sometimes have trouble with it. So, but... It's worth it because of the heat that it produces. Again, I'm not cutting those because they're healthy. Now here was that other dead uh, oak that I mentioned. Other red oak that was down here. Same thing here. I had no trouble dropping it. Um, as you can see, it fell this way and then rolled down the hill a little bit. But that's okay. I started cutting on the far end there, you can see. And there'll be a lot of wood in this. Again, it's all good solid wood. I have to come back. I decided to cut these a little higher just to make sure that they would fall the way I wanted. But I've got to come back and cut the stump wood out of here. I've got at least one round, maybe two rounds of firewood still in there that I want to salvage. As you can see, though, oops, sorry, that camera thing. Um, the ants were in this. You can see the rot that's in the middle there. Uh, and that's probably why the tree died. Those uh, carpenter ants do a, a real job on the wood, and they are here. So, again, I've got all this to cut and haul out of here. That's a lot of firewood. 
even some of this dead stuff that's this is a, an oak branch that's been probably laying here for five years or three years anyhow you can see there's no uh no bark on it anymore and it started to rot a little bit but it's very solid yet i can cut this up and burn this very well also so why leave it here to rot you know i just i cut a couple slices off the other day just to see if it was solid all the way through even up here near the end and yes it is so it will burn well maybe not quite as much btus as a healthy tree that just season you know that was green and then seasoned but it's still got a lot of a lot of uh, potential for uh, providing heat so why leave it in the woods you know here are those shag bark hickory i was talking about it about just a little bit ago you can see how the bark kind of sticks out a bit like a shaggy rug or a shaggy dog kind of thing that's how you can identify the shag bark hickory because this this bark just stands out so in fact I saw a guy one time at an outdoor show who was making uh, not maple syrup but hickory syrup it's more like an oil but he doesn't extract it from the tree he boils it from the bark and it's I, I bought some from to try it it's got a smoky flavor to it it's not as good as of course maple syrup but uh, it was interesting that they could do that that he just he doesn't have to destroy the tree he just kind of peels the outer bark pieces and cooks it from there apparently so who knows <laughs> and here's the third of those uh, dead oaks that I talked about in the previous video I dropped this one this way again it fell exactly the way I wanted it to um, I'm not an expert on aiming trees but I can look at them and kind of guesstimate the way they're leaning which way they're gonna go as long as there's no problem with it I just drop them where they want to fall so um, this one did too and as you can see it's got a lot of nice wood in it too all the way up to the tops up there so and it's closer to the road see my truck right over there so it'll be easier to haul out I didn't bring my tractor with me I just brought a wheelbarrow so I'll probably get some of the stuff that's closer to the road that's easy to push out by hand today um, but this is going to be weeks of work here to finish cutting all this up and hauling it out not constantly but just over the course of a few weeks just working out a piecemeal but again lots and lots of nice firewood this red oak stuff it burns beautifully once it's good and seasoned and it will provide lots of warmth for our family certainly through next year maybe into the following winter I think like I said before because these were dead it's very possible that I could burn these towards the end of next winter I'll have to see how they dry out in the summertime um, the, that one that blew over that was green that one no I've got to give that two years so but uh, but these, since they were dead, they might dry out enough that I could burn them this year, year, this burning season, this coming winter burning season. So we'll see what happens. But um, I'll come back to you maybe one more time with a little more cutting, and then we'll end this video. All right, let's do some cutting on this top a little bit. Now for this, I'm just going to use one of my other saws. Uh, this smaller echo chainsaw I got as a gift. Oops, I don't know if you can see that. Uh, it's okay. It's got decent bite. Uh, it's not a steel, of course, but Echo isn't a bad brand. This is a CS33510, 16-inch um, bar on it, and it's uh, 16 or 14, can't remember. And it does the job for lighter stuff. This is more a homeowner saw, like if you had to trim trees around your house and so on. I wouldn't use this all the time, but it's quicker and more nimble here for the smaller stuff, and also the fatigue factor after lugging a heavier saw um, longer so this saves on that plus gas I didn't bring extra gas with me so I won't use my main tank from my main steel all up I'll use some of this so let's get to it
you can see, I'm not sure the angle here because I'm not uh, behind the camera. Just a couple safety tips as usual, like I usually say, especially when you're out in the woods with a chainsaw. First of all, you always make sure you have good footing. You don't want to trip over anything. You don't want to slip. You want to make sure that your base is solid so that if something should happen with the saw, kick back or bind, you're okay. You're not going to lose you. It's not going to push you off balance and you get hurt. Number two, always, always, always have a good tight grip on the saw. That way if there's any kind of kickback or any kind of problems, binds up, it, it's not going to be ripped out of your hands. That's when you can get hurt too. And of course the safety brake is there to protect you. Um, and I always try to keep the blade in a safe direction. I never cut like towards myself. I, mean, I might cut down, but if you saw there, most of the time I was cutting from the bottom up so that was away from my legs um, some people wear chaps if you want to wear leather chaps I can't blame you for that I just never invested in them but I just take my time um, thank God I've never cut myself with a saw not that that couldn't happen but thank God it hasn't um, as you can see this little saw a quick work of those branches they're not huge but each one of those chunks will burn well I can put I don't know, a dozen of them in and fill the stove and it'll burn for hours. So it's worth harvesting in my mind. I mean, some people who do it more commercially wouldn't mess with it. They just cut, you know, cut the larger branches, uh, cut it at the larger branches and leave the top. But I'm a one horse operation, so anything I can burn, I do. So at any rate, yeah, this little echo saw isn't bad for that. It's very nimble, um, but I'm still going to stick with my steel. Uh, if I didn't get this for a gift, I probably wouldn't have it. Um, and I know steel does make some smaller saws too, so, uh, you know, it's your choice. Just uh, get, get one of the better brands. Echo isn't bad. Steel, I think, is the king. A lot of people think Husker Bar is better, uh, but of those three brands, you can't really go wrong. So, thank you for watching. I hope that uh, you enjoyed this, and we'll come back to you with more videos of Country Living on a Shoestring. Please like and subscribe.